you might be wondering why I'm out driving around. Well, this last week I've been helping collect masks and other PPE for hospitals. Um, as long as they're N95 and unused, but even if the box has been opened, they're taking them. And that's that shows where we are. That's only going to last so long, though. I mean, there's only so much PPE out there in private hands to be collected. Um, so hospitals are already starting to ask people to sew cloth masks for them, and that's great. Um, giving out kits at a hundred of a time, and they people have already grabbed them all. So at the moment, I can't do that, though I would like to. But it got me thinking. They're having to cut the patterns for all these kits. Um, and it's basically just a simple rectangle, but with these notches on each side to show where they pleat. And so I'm wondering, maybe my skills are best put to coming up with a way to mass cut those patterns for them. Because frankly, my skills on the sewing machine, I'm like, nah, I can do it, but I'm not great. But I do think I can make a die cut system for them with a custom die that can just press cut, I don't know, a couple dozen layers of fabric at a time. Um, I'm less sure about exactly how much, but I, I think it should work. So I'm on my way back from Harbor Freight where I just got the cheapest hydraulic press I could find. And yeah, let's see if we can make a, uh, a custom die and help them start cranking out these kits. Okay, it's still super wobbly, um, cause you know, it's Harbor Freight and that's never fun to assemble, but it's good enough to run some tests. So I'm gonna get started on that. Okay, since I have really no idea what I'm doing here, I'm gonna start very simple. Let's just see if we can cut a circle out of a stack of paper. Um, this is some 4130 I had on hand. Uh, so I think if I do this for real, I want some tool steel that I can harden, but Certainly for testing purposes, this is fine. So I'm going to cut off a chunk, um, quickly cut an edge on it, um, on the blade, I guess, since it's round, it'll be fast, and then just weld on a uh, cross piece across the back that the press can push down on. I've just been using a protractor in the scale to try and figure out what angle to cut it at and I think a 10 degrees looks good. That'll give me a lot of, a lot of tooth, but it should still exit before we start, uh, you know, running into the chuck jaws. 10 degrees it is. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not, it's not sharp yet. I'm gonna change the angle on the compound um, to more like uh, 25 degrees, something around there, and then do the final bits there so the, the actual chisel edge isn't quite so super thin and fragile. I think that's the proper way to do this. I'm not a, a bladesmith. I just, uh, you know, watch videos like everyone else. Yeah, let's try this out. 
This should do nicely as a crossbar, just some uh, half inch square stock. If I remember correctly, I think this might be some of the last that was salvaged off of a friend's parent's porch like 15 years ago, finally using it all up. Just need to weld this in place and it looks kind of like the London Underground roundel now. Hmm. Okay, that took me more attempts than it should have for a dumb joke, but you know, I had to get the spacing more or less right. Okay, on to welding. I didn't show you the welding because it wasn't that interesting, but I, I messed up. I just put this straight on the welding table, which is grounded to the welder, and normally that's fine, but this edge was so fine and thin, you got a lot of little micro arcing going on, and it really, I don't know if you can see that, it, uh, it really melted away some of the edge in places, so I'm going to go ahead and try this in the press, and then if there are like weird jaggedy tears, um, maybe I'll think about a way to clean this up better. But anyway, look, it's the London Underground Ronald. That was totally a worthwhile thing to do with my time. So here's the setup. I've got um, eight layers of cardboard um, pushing down onto a wood platen just so we don't dull the teeth unnecessarily, any more than they already are, that is. Then there's the steel platen that came with the press, and then there's the cutter. So let's see how this works. Oh wow, the, uh, the crossbar is bending down. I wasn't expecting that. I need to recalibrate my, my, uh, my estimations using a press like this. These are powerful little things, aren't they? Not bad. Check that out. That's not bad either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Some deformation where it got pressed down, of course. Um, that I don't know if that'd be worse or better in fabric, but uh, I'll have to try that next. So that's uh, four layers that, that actually got cut through. Actually, it did good. It, uh, well, except for this last little bit. If you look at the wood, it still didn't actually, <laughs> you can see some of the orange there, but it didn't cut in as deeply as that first time when I really, on the cardboard where I just really let go. Okay. I think this is enough to say it has promise. Um, I'm going to try a couple more runs just to get a feel for it. The bit of playing around, this is what it looks like going through um, 24 layers total. It took, some, it took some work moving the press around and doing it a couple times. So, I don't know, I'm going to have to think about this. Kind of playing with using an aluminum plate to press into. So stronger than the wood, but still hopefully the idea was not enough to totally mess up the die. And the results were pretty good. Um, they don't look good because <laughs> I'm using just scraps here and I wasn't cutting actually through all the edges. But uh, that's one of the more promising tests so far. This is one of the patterns that's going around and I have seen it endorsed by hospitals. 
Um, it's not the one the local hospital was using, but they've now changed that anyway. They've found some companies to do it for them. So, um, but plenty of hospitals in other parts of the country are sending stuff like this out. So I think this is the one I'm going to try and use. After a bunch of experimentation, here's the plan. I'm going to try and make the small child's mask from this plan pattern. Sorry. Um, I'm going to do it out of this. I'm going to make the die out of this stainless sheet that I have. Um, I stainless mostly just because that's what I have on hand. That's pretty tough. I don't have tool steel, and I'm now thinking, hmm, I've heard some bad things about putting hardened steel in a press, so maybe I should hold off on that anyway until I actually know what I'm doing. So we're going to start with this. Um, I need to first uh, cut it into some rough lengths. There are two straight edges, so I can do those exactly, and then I'll just overcut for the rounded ones. Then I'm going to put them in the mill and cut the bevel, the cutting bevel, on the, on the top side. And I will have to uh, nod the, the head of the mill to do that, but I can tram it. It's not actually that big a deal. Then I will get out the inductive heater, induction heater, and start working in those curves, which um, they're pretty simple. I don't think that'll take too long. And then I can uh, weld them together. I've got some moderately thick steel plate here um, and if that and if I think that's bending too much as it cuts there's some other things I can stack behind it to average the load out a little bit better so yeah that's the plan so I was floundering a bit trying to measure the length of that curve you know trying to lay string along it and all the dumb stuff I assume everyone's tried at one point or another but then I remembered a technique I saw on the uh, Ingalls coach shop videos which if you haven't been watching they're really great, where he has something called a traveler, I believe is the term, which is just a wheel that you can roll along a curved surface. And then the real ones have like pointers on the inside. So you can measure, say, the inside of a wheel to get the ID, and then you can just move the, the pointer down to where it stops. And so it's this very sort of analog, not unit-based measurement. In this case, I'm measuring it in degrees because that's a pretty nice um, graduation on the outside of this protractor. So I can roll it along there and measure it, and that one was like 98 degrees, and then take it up to the piece of stock and do the same thing. Uh, works pretty well, actually. Well, that last one didn't work so well. It kept inching up out of the vise and slipping free. And anyway, by the end of it, you can see how much deeper that cut is there than there because the whole thing was creeping up like that. So I'm going to try, I have enough of this stock left to do one more this size. And I'm just going to cut it on the mill again, just taking very, very shallow cuts and it'll just take me forever to do. But um, I think it's just this width of material in that vise. It's just very hard to get it on, to get a really good grip on it. Um, there's also the problem that the the parallel I have in there is only marginally thinner than this piece here. So so that's hard. Maybe I can maybe I'll lay a piece of copper wire or something in here so the vise can grip on that. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Okay, that came out a lot better. As you can see, I added this brass strip in there to give the vise more bite on the piece that actually mattered. And I also um, added some Sharpie marks um, all over so I could see if it was starting to move. So, lesson learned. Here are the final pieces off of the mill. I did cut a uh, secondary bevel on the top at 25 degrees, which maybe isn't enough. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead with these and try them out and just, uh, touch these edges just very briefly on some 1500 grit sandpaper, just to deburr them a little bit. It feels pretty nice and sharp. I think it'll work. So 
let me set up the induction heater and we'll get started on that. This is the induction heater. That's the uh, water cooling supply for it. Pumps cooled water through it and actually out and through the solenoid and back in keeps it cool. But the basic idea is it's, it's, it's Maxwell applied. Put a strongly alternating electric current through the solenoid that sets up magnetic fields which set up electric fields inside anything in the middle of there and those have friction and it heats it up. It works kind of like this. You stick to stick whatever you want in there like that. Got a foot pedal activation. It shouldn't spark like that. I need to be more careful. The solenoid isn't isn't particularly well sized for what I'm heating here, so it's taking longer than normal, but it works and still easier than setting up the forge. But yeah, just like that. And it's heated it up. So I'm going to use that to bend the two curved ones into shape. So that's not great, I'll be blunt. Um, I think I'm going to stick with this for now though because I it barely fits through the solenoid and I keep getting arcing again just from the induction system this, this time, not the welder. Um, and it's chewing up again the fine edge on that, which I wasn't expecting. I've tried, I've tried squishing the solenoid a bit, but you can only do that so much before the copper buckles and that's no good. Um, so I don't really don't want to push that much farther. And the, uh, as you can see, the insulation on here is already torn up from when I was using it so much last year. So I'm going to try moving on the small piece and we'll just see how well this works. That's quite a bit better. Um, the magnets aren't actually holding them up directly because it's stainless, so no fair magnetism, but they can still just physically block them from falling over. Anyway, that's a pretty close match. I think that's good enough for this test run. Um, let's get it set up on the plate, which first I need to clean up a little bit. This is kind of hideous. it is um it's not it's not awesome <laughs> i will freely admit that but 
we'll see how it works. Um, I, I just kind of spot welded it all over. I didn't want to distort too much. And I did, I did do a couple welds up where they joined so they can't, couldn't uh, peel out away from each other. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see how well it works. Okay, here's the first test of the new die. I have aluminum plate again, as that seemed to help. Um, being rigid, but not too rigid. Uh, this is 12 layers of fabric. Um, I can't say there's anything scientific about that number. It just worked out well. And the die. So I don't really know where the center of it is to place it, but we'll try that. Okay, applying pressure now. The plate is not, it's a little bit bowed, I think, but it's hard to see. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I'm at, I, I have no idea exactly how much pressure I'm at. I'm at the point where it's starting to get uncomfortable pulling down on the, the pumping lever. So I'm gonna let that go and we'll see how it did. It, uh, okay, it cut here through Two or three layers. Yeah, three layers. And that's it. That's the entire cut. So, um, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> this is not a resounding success. So, after some more experimentation, I'm coming to the conclusion that this just doesn't work. Fun little project, nothing I'd done before. Um, I don't know if the correct solution is maybe to have a roller system instead of a single press so that the force would just be concentrated in smaller areas so you could get higher pressure easier. Because um, once you get up to something this size, you're spreading that force out over quite an, quite an area. Um, or maybe the solution is you need to have an internal die that matches this shape that's pushing inside so you actually get like a shearing scissor action. That could be. Um, that's the problem when you start to work on a project and have no idea what you're doing. You have no idea what you're doing. But really, I think the conclusion here is that this is one of those times where I thought I had like a cool techie solution that I could, that I could do to help out. And in the end, uh, just using scissors would have been better. Uh, it's always important to keep that humility. So luckily, the hospital asked for it locally, as I think I mentioned earlier, they, uh, they've canceled the call saying that companies have stepped up and are gonna start providing uh, these type of masks, so that's good. I'm gonna keep an eye on if uh, any more efforts start in the local area. We're still on a waiting list to get some of the kits ourselves because we do have two sewing machines in the house. Um, and continue driving around picking up donated PPE and hopefully that'll be enough. So stay safe, everyone. <laughs>